Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 244, our mid-October, getting close to the end of the year, definitely in the last quarter, all kinds of good stuff. I was saying before this meeting that this meeting is consequential. This is gonna be a big meeting, I think, and we should get into it. As always, this meeting is recorded for those of you that are uh, not with us right here, right now. Uh, so if you wanna watch this very consequential meeting in the future, you can do so. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna talk about. If you're here, go ahead and say hi in the chat. It's always great to have you guys with us. Uh, what are we doing today? We are gonna to do triage. Triage is gonna be a little bit weird today because all of the issues were opened by the three of us on this call. Uh, after that, we will talk about Wix 4 status and then we'll take questions and comments like we always do. Uh, I think there's plenty of us for us to talk about. So let's go ahead and get into this. Bob, you ready for triage? I am ready for triage. All right, here we go. We have seven open issues and three closed ones, which means we have 10 to get through, but you'll notice by the names here, they're all people here. So we'll start with the oldest and Bob is assigned to you. Uh, you're up, 6350, burn does not repair an MSI when slipstream with a minor update patch. Ron, great to see you. Bob? Yeah, so, Sorry, I'm looking on the stream and I'm not seeing your browser. Oh, am I the only one not seeing a browser? Mm, uh oh, triage didn't work. I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, let's try that. There we go. Better? Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Not seeing it yet. Sorry. A little bit of a delay. All right. Um, yes. So I volunteered for some reason long ago to uh, investigate this. Um, and Sean was very helpful in providing logs and repros. And um, I summarized um, what I discovered and basically came to the conclusion that um, it would take, uh, take an interesting amount of effort to um, to have Burn understand how patched packages um, are affected by by the minor upgrade uh, version changes, it's possible. As I lay out, um, Windows installer has this capability of looking at a patch and um, and you know, summarizing it, um, we call them patch XML blobs. Um, I was originally under the assumption, and you know what they say about assumptions, uh, that it was indeed a blob. It was supposed to be an opaque blob, but the schema is documented. Um, so it's possible uh, that Burn could, you know, essentially take the patch XML that it has in the manifest and I think relying on the sequencing that Burn does via MSI, obviously, um, for the patches to determine whether the bundled patch um, actually you know, brings the MSI up to the level of the package on the machine. Um, it's not a huge amount of work. Um, I think there's a fair bit of, of uncertainty, certainly from my perspective, um, that we can actually rely on all of this data to cover, you know, some of the weird states that you can get into with patching. Uh, my biggest fear was the combination of minor upgrade patches and hotfix patches. Uh, but for the purposes of determining the uh, effective product version on the machine, I think we have all the data that we need. Um, so I guess my suggestion here is that we should look at this uh, but it's not a trivial effort and we should not attempt to do it in V4 and make it a 
you know, B5 major feature kind of thing. I don't have strong feelings about this thing, so. Yeah, all I did was ported the test that was in V3, mm -hmm. and we don't even really know which of these tests we're supposed to be passing. So. Well, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I spent some time um, looking at that under the assumption that the patch was supposed or the test was supposed to pass, um, and and by spending time, I meant I, w I went back to like Wix three six, the first version of Burn, to compare the behavior, and as far as I can tell. The behavior would be the same. In other words, we didn't in you know Wix three six have this logic to you know look at the patch XML. Um, so you know I was I kind of kind of struggled to understand what was going on there. Um, it's possible that this was a test that well. One, that it was a test that never passed. Um, you know, it was, I don't know, uh, an educational test rather than, you know, functional. Um, it's possible the behavior changed in other ways um, between the time the test was written and when 3.6 shipped. Um, a lot of those tests came uh, actually during the development of burn, which was originally slated for uh, Wix 3.5. That was a time when we had some of the Visual Studio team more deeply um, integrated into the Wix team. So it's possible that this was a test that worked during that time period. Um, and for whatever reason, uh, the behavior changed before uh, Wix 3.6 was released. And unfortunately, that time period was all inside Microsoft, so I don't have access to deeper spelunking tools. I do agree that the it, the test probably ought to work. Um, you know, the functionality, if you have a patch um, in the bundle, Burn should you know, be able to recognize that. Um, I don't know how common it is in a real world scenario. Slipstreaming patches is, you know, obviously not typical. Um, so I'm kind of not, I, I don't think this is a, a high priority issue or a high priority feature because of, of just a very narrow real world use. Okay. So I do want to keep it open. Um, you know, and put it people... in the next or. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, it's, it's, I mean, you know, this, it would be a behavior breaking change, but otherwise, you know, not, not a huge problem and probably not, um, you know, uh, terribly disruptive. So, but, it's it's a big enough thing and as i think you're aware sometimes you have to really kind of mentally work your way up to the idea of getting deep into patching <laughs> yes patching is uh, a different world okay so into the future it goes yep okay dokily um wix should provide a default feature bob uh sorry uh 6935 yeah, so um, this actually came up because of your other stream, um, and and thinking about uh, what Wix four templates might look like. One of the nice things you know we've done over the years is is to reduce some boilerplate, um, and it occurred to me that we could do the same thing with the feature tree. Uh, lots of lots of packages have you know, one feature, no conditions, 
it would be nice if we could supply that um, and you know obviously continue to let you specify a feature tree if you actually need multiple nodes or whatever um, it it's a little complicated um, I didn't mention in the bug um, actually you brought it up that features are involved in advertisement um, which most people don't you know, care about. Um, yeah, not and Wix, yeah it, it used to be a bigger deal. Um, and MSI, uh, you know, unless you're using the raw uh, com tables, which Wix does not do by default, um, <laughs> yeah, those too. you mostly ignore it, except for advertised shortcuts, which are still a, a thing. Um, and And this feature would have to uh, feature uh, would have to fit into uh, you know the, the the overall system including all the rest of the advertisement stuff but certainly advertise shortcuts so there's a little bit of work to do there yeah so I still like the idea of this feature but I think there's also other things we should default if we look holistically and so I, I think this would be an interesting thing, especially as we consider the the top level file, or file without a component, and those sorts of concepts. I think this would yep. fit with those, which I think is a V five thing. Yeah, I agree. We haven't got there yet, but that's certainly something I would like to see in four. But we've already done enough in four, so on to five. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It, it, this is not something I would proposed to put for at this point i think this needs a whip yeah oh yeah for sure so i think this is whip required we toss it and be next and talk about it or it's whip required or whatever and review it in the larger going forward yep github is being responsive today i'm seeing the changes on my screen all right ui compiler custom actions Duplication. Um, this was opened and a PR was sent by Stefan, which is very cool. And Sean brought up an issue with the implementation, which is also true. And so I thought we should talk about it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Sorry, this is 6937. Yep. Your screen's updating now, so I'm, All right, good. I'm good. But, you know, for accessibility, announcing the number is not a bad thing. Um, yeah, so... You know the because of the platform specific custom actions um, that we introduced in Wix four, and the fact that the UI um, uses control events, uh, the the UI extension um, is now responsible for quote unquote authoring the custom actions um, when you use the uh, the Wix UI element. Um, so the bug is if you have more than one Wix UI element, um, you'll get multiple custom actions. So that's what this bug says and what the PR fixes. Yay. Sean brings up the annoying point that that only works as far as, as the you know, compilation unit, basically. So, yeah. Um, I don't know how to cover all of these scenarios. I admit I have not given it a huge amount of thought. Um, the having the compiler extension do the custom action definitions was my workaround for the the custom action uh, the the problem of having uh, multiple custom actions with. Uh, sorry, by platform, but needing to handle the different custom actions with the same IDs, whereas normally we have distinct IDs by platform. Um, that was my workaround. Um, it's not a great workaround, it turns out. Um, but I don't know. Uh, the, so... This, for me, this falls into the same category we had, um, we've talked about in the past of, of Wix 
really should have some some systems in place to handle multiple architectures and multiple languages and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so is but, this new behavior better than the previous behavior? The, previous being V3? The, the original, no, in V4. So this fix made things slightly better. Yes. Or made it better in one case, but worse in another case. No. Okay, so it fixed one case, but there's still the problem with the other case. Correct, yes. So let's say there are two bugs. Yep. At least two bugs. Um, and this this issue points out one of them. Sean points out the other. One of them is fixed. The other is not. So let's get an issue tracking the other problem. Yep. Now, can we pre-triage that and say, do we need that in V4? Or is it is this scenario enough of an edge case that if you hit it, or is there a workaround? Well, I mean, the workaround is to, you know, reduce yep. the number of times you use the Wix UI element. Um, but could you get around it with a custom action ref? Like, no, you couldn't manually reference it. No, no. The, the Oh, it will be referencing custom action. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I don't think we can fix this without the bigger system that allows that's, an extension yeah. to do cool things with the architecture. Yeah, that's my fear. Um, yeah, I gave it some thought when I originally did the work to you know, add all the platform-specific custom actions. Uh, but I, I didn't come up with you know, anything. I went down the path of you know, bind time variables and whatnot, and yeah, yeah. it didn't come up. Um, I, this is essentially a <sighs> this is a problem. MSIs are platform specific, and Windows installer is very happy with that model. Um, Wix, and especially Wix libraries, are you know, multi multiple support multiple platforms. So there's a clash here. I mean, I did create that issue where it was asking for a feature where the UI extension can have that the custom action ID yeah. that is not decorated. And then at some point during the process, it gets turned into uh, a, an ID with a suffix with for right, the architecture. Right. And then that pulls in the correct right. custom. Yeah, right. Well, right. We know there's a bigger need here to solve this more generically. I'm trying to figure out right now, are we in an okay state and the workaround is for people to change their code in a way that's not unreasonable? Or are people gonna to try to use this in a reasonable, Wix UI in a reasonable way and then find that they cannot get what they want done without a work and no workaround will work for them? The biggest problem that I see at the moment is that the uh, converter, sorry, backing up. The biggest problem is you need the custom actions only when you're pulling in a, a uh, reference to a dialog set. Problem is a lot of people like to customize their stuff, which we support. Um, but one of the things, it's very typical that they pull in um, WixUI underscore common. Um, and right now the converter is gonna convert that to, a U, to this WixUI element. It might be as simple as not doing that for that well-known ID or conversely doing it only for the well-known dialog set IDs. I'll open an issue and take a look at that. Okay. Uh, to answer your question, I think we're fine. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, we're, we're in an okay state. Um, because, you know, 
we can we know that this might be an issue. We can document it. It'll be okay. Um, and I think it's a fairly narrow edge case that we're going to have this kind of problem. Most people aren't going to run into this problem. Most people have, at most, they have their UI in, you know, one frag or the 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 references in one fragment. So I, you know, it's it's fairly narrow um, scope with a reasonable workaround. So yeah, that's what I was most give it a score. Right. If they can get out of it, that then it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know there's a problem. Right. Here's how you right. get out of it. And they're like, okay, fine. And they're out. Right. What yeah. I'm worried about is something like, well, I did this, and now I can't do anything. And we're like, oh yeah, you're yeah. trapped. That's the only. Yeah. That's the one I'm worried about. I don't. I don't think we're boxing anyone in. We may be forcing them to change their code, which is not as yes. ideal. But exactly, it'll at least still work. And. We need to look at that architecture thing. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So something came out of that. All right. Standardize uh, Wix v4 on .NET 6, uh, which is 6942. Uh, this came up in discussion on Wix devs as we have some people trying to do uh, ARM validation of the Wix tool set because ARM is becoming important for Microsoft. So Microsoft has have some people uh, pushing and Wix is important for that. So they've been doing that and they point out that I did not realize that .NET Core 3.1 did not have full support for ARM, although it makes sense when you think about the time frame. Uh, and .NET Core 3.1 is out of service in two months and 10 days, something like that and everything will work correctly in .NET 6. So all of that said, Wix isn't gonna, Wix before RTM is probably not, uh, if it releases before uh, the end of .NET Core, it's not for more than a few days, probably. So yeah. uh, we probably should standardize on .NET 6 and not even mess with the whole .NET Core uh, 3. The other thing I'm seeing is that it appears that the world is finally adopting .NET Core at version six more than i've seen on any version before I've, I've kind of wondered why it was quiet and it just seems like everybody was i don't know not adopting dotnet core until six it seems like that's the one where people are starting to jump on board so uh we'll do the same i already made this change it and went through i just want to talk about it here so that you know people knew that this kind of went through so there's another question uh -huh. for the dotnet core ba the host should we support .NET 3.1? Because the, I had to I had to contribute a feature to .NET Core itself to make it work better for 3.1. So 3.1 mm -hmm. uses one code path, and everything else uses a different code path. <laughs> oh, I'm shocked. Oh wait. That's harder because that's runtime behavior where someone else may choose .NET Core 3.1. It's not but a question. We didn't support it in V3. That's true. I, um, I, now, the I, interesting part is, is that most of the UI frameworks were added in .NET 5. Right. When forms in WPF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So .NET Core 3 was really a, not a likely target anyway. And five wasn't a long-term servicing, so that wasn't going to get big adoption. So six is the place where people, and maybe that's why people are finally looking at six. It has yeah. an AI framework. Um, or maybe it was just time. Um, it's going to be out of LTS. If we don't support it, people are going to have a real hard time saying that we should. And if it cuts the code pass down and the testing, it's probably worth it. I mean, that was part of when I said, let's, for me and Wix, I'm like, yeah, let's just not support .NET Core 3 because it doesn't bring anything to the table for the build tool side of it. So I was like, that was easy. It's going to be out of service. People shouldn't use it. Why should we in the first version support it? I mean, I know you did work to get it in there, but if it cuts us having to worry about it, it might be worth it for that reason. Yeah, I mean, like the thing is your change 
got rid of the test that was testing. Because uh, I did just do a massive sweep of everything, <laughs> not realizing there was a difference on that one. Um, yeah, so there's like an example project, like earliest core MBA or whatever. Uh -huh. That was supposed to be representing the got earliest it. target that we want to support. Uh, regardless of that, I think it's <laughs> well, probably... Which is now six, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, it's... I mean, if it deletes code, it's probably worth it. I, yeah. I'd, I'd much rather not ship it, you know, days before 3.1 goes out of release than have to deal with a deprecation and obsolescence plan. And just any of the bugs that come around it and like not even if it's in there it's like around you have to deal with it you're like and who uses this nobody should so yeah let's not start with it i yeah uh, makes sense to me yeah that's fine yeah all right moving on wix version to new wix toolset versioning this is a thing that starts itching in the back of my brain for a while as I saw the strings moving around in bundles and I realized that more and more it was possible that bundles would get the new Wix versions and I was like, oh, if you're managed, you won't, you'll have to parse that string yourself if you wanted. And then if you wanted a managed version, you'd have to take Wix toolset.data, which has tons of build goo in it. And it's a very large assembly because it has lots and lots of data in it because it's the data assembly for the build system. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do the work, pull it out into a separate assembly so people could reuse it and uh, finish the implementation with all the compare work to make it useful in bundles and bring all the tests over. So. I was just like, this is this is a good thing. And I saw that NuGet has the same thing in their world. They have a NuGet.versioning, which has essentially just their versioning thing in it. So I'm like, you know what? I think this is uh, probably the way that we should mimic it. So did that. So now that you can just access the Wix toolset version by taking one reference to this assembly and things work without having to take lots of other goo. So you could parse a string, of whatever bundle version support and your bundle can do the right thing too. So anyway, I debated this when I first wrote Wix version in Wix toolset.data. I sat there for a while going, where should I put this? So finally got to the motivation to push it into its own assembly. All right. Um, now I think we get to my yellow stickies. No, Bob has one here at the end, but these were the things that as I was doing patching, I had, I had a backlog of things that I was just writing down, making sure I wouldn't forget in scribbles. And then I finally sat down and wrote, opened a bunch of these. So 6944, I'm looking for people's opinions on this. Use Wix extension four instead of tools as the root folder in the extension NuGet packages. So today the extension NuGet packages use the tools folder because I've treated that in the past as a dumping ground for all things that aren't assembly library references. Because if you're the libs folder, you get all kinds of extra behavior. And if you're content folder, you just get copied to project. Neither of that is the behavior we want for extensions. So everything else has just gotten to tools. Even though tools really is about tools that can run, like Wix.exe itself is a tool that you can run. And so the more I kind of looked at it, the more, the less confident I came that using tools was a good idea. And so then I was like, hey, what if we just create Wix extension four inside the NuGet? package instead and because we know our assemblies are going to be targeted then we then can have a NuGet package that targets Wix toolset 4 and then when Wix toolset 5 comes out any breaking changes that could look in another folder. So uh, that was my thinking but I wanted to run it by here to see if people had a better idea or if they knew that I'm wrong and tools should be used as the catch-all um, or any other opinions about this. Um, we, sounds good. Do we need to add something so that the extension can actually detect whether the project is four or five? The extension can detect the, uh, the, um, there already is the version in the Wix target. So an extension can, as part of its targets file, 
tell which version of Wix it's running against, I've added that to the Wix prop. So that's about the only thing you'll get there. Otherwise, Wix itself will look in the appropriate numbered folder. So I think that gets both directions. One, Wix will look into the NuGet package in the appropriate number. And if an extension has its props files, it will be able to use the version of the Wix props file to uh, point it to the correct version inside itself. Okay. And if not, if that's not good enough, this will flush out that and I will make sure that the version number is good enough in the props file. Like if it's not early enough or something, I'll, I'll finagle it to make sure it's in the right place of, at time to make that work. Um, but I think this is, so this is signed to me. I was waiting for this meeting to make sure that this wasn't a terrible, horrible, bad idea, um, but I'll go through and update all the extensions to uh, conform to this and the extension manager to respect them. And then I think we'll be in a better place than using tools folder. So there's that. Thank you for moving triage, Bob. All right, moving on. Uh, these are really small things that I have been hanging around that have been bugging me. I don't know if we need to go into them deeply, but 6945, uh, we have this hangover stuff for extension directory and reference paths, which were mirrored kind of sort of after lib path from C++. And given that extensions now come from NuGet packages or from the tools, uh, ex uh, extension command, the Wix uh, extensions command line option, these don't make a lot of sense anymore. And they end up doing a lot of path searching when resolving paths that just, none of it makes any sense. So I'm looking at removing this. That's actually what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at removing both of these properties because they're just, they're nonsensical in the world of, uh, Wix 4. They made more sense when we happened to install all of our extensions in one directory. Then it was like, yeah, just add that directory to your search path and you're off to the races. So uh, kind of hangovers from Wix 3 that I've had in there. Um, and this one I tripped across when I was doing something in the targets, I think when I was fixing the the compile or the making the uh, validation not run every build. Or, or when the build was up to date, when the compile was up to date, not, no, when the build was up to date, not running validation, anyway, that issue. Um, the C++, not C++, the C sharp targets, which is what we want to model more, when they resolve references, return only the resolve references, the ones that they can find on disk, and then they put the other ones in a different list, and they pass only the resolved ones to the tool set, and the net result is that you can successfully build, even if it can't find assemblies that you referenced, if you didn't use those assemblies. And I was like, okay, I, I understand that behavior better now, having gone through their code. So this is about doing the same thing as they do uh, to make sure that our resolve paths follow similar paths to them. And Wix will already do the right thing in the end. In fact, you'll probably get better error messages um, when you can't find the extensions. It'll say, hey, you need these. So that's what 6946 is about. Anyway, MS build stuff that I was in. All right. Uh, Reevaluate the use of compare string local invariant with a compare string ordinal in 6947. Um, I didn't know compare string ordinal existed, but a lot of that was because it was introduced in, I think, uh, Vista. Yeah, in Vista. And a lot of my C++ had been focused on only things supported by XPSP2 for so long. Um, and now that it's XPSP2 is well far in the uh, rear view mirror, it's like, you know, we can standardize on Win7 APIs. And I hit this problem comparing strings between the way C Sharp compared them and the way that compare string local invariant compared them was different. Um, uh, when I was comparing, oh, the version strings. Anyway, the, the net net is that compare string ordinal is the recommended way to do comparisons for file names, environment variables, and names, and mutexes, and basically all the things that we care about where we do local invariant, um, including XML names, I think. Um, and so I think we should consider switching from compare string local invariant to compare string ordinal. Um, I don't think we need to take this in four, but I wanted to put this issue out there as a thing to do 
later, like when we have more time to know that it will not break anything else. Um, but this was interesting bug I tripped across because of this. So I wanted to capture it. So I, I, I'd like to propose we put this in V next as a, like a big deutal sweep. Maybe burn um, too. I don't know if burn has these two. It might. It, it does. <clears throat> and part of me is wondering if um, we should, in, in addition to doing this, or as part of doing this, we should, you know, add something to stir util um, to use as our, you know, kind of go to string compare. Because right now the compare string calls, we have a mix of compare string and compare string ex, um, and especially the ex version has, I think, eighty two arguments. Uh, it's it's big and wieldy, <laughs> and I'm wondering if we can, you know, introduce a couple of of stereo functions that will hide this particular change. Could do. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't go that far into it. But anyway. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm fine with this change. It, we well, probably have avoided, um, you know, Vista Plus stuff for quite a while. Yeah, it, it's at least Win Seven. There's lots of good stuff in Win Seven that we can use now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Vista was the, the. I thought we were still targeting Vista. Are we targeting Vista? I thought Vista was long gone, and Win Seven was the baseline. I think Vista was still was going to end on the extended support at the same uh, time Windows 7 was. Oh, okay. Well, this is in Vista 2, so. All right. Yeah. Win 7 and Vista end at the same time. I, I, looked, a, I wonder what Win 7 adoption support. is still these days. Well, the extended support ends... Um, in January, so. uh, for Vista or for both? Uh, I did, I have not looked at Vista because I also assumed it was it was long long gone. Uh, um, but when seven, the last of the extended support uh, bribes, I mean programs that you can pay for, end in January, mid January, I think. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, I still. This is still a good thing. And I'm pretty sure this API is in Win 10. Um, I believe that um, I believe that 8.1 uh, 8. also ends in 2023, in yeah, January. Yeah, they threw 8.1 under the bus pretty hard. So Yeah, yeah. And then Windows 10 survives another two years. So yeah, Right. All right. Um, heat directory v4 task fails. Open by Bob assigned to me. I am working on this fix now. This is 6951. Um, it works when you use the targets file. It does not work when you bypass the targets file and go straight into the task. So I have added a test for that and I have a fix for that on my machine locally that I um, am rolling in with my other MS build fixes these things up here. So uh, that will be coming soon. I, I guess I should pre be prepared that when we open all the issues, we're probably gonna have to talk about them a little bit longer, right? <laughs> Probably fair. Yeah. <laughs> Although some of mine went easier, but not all of them. All right. Um, everything's assigned and off to the races. I'm going to hit a five real quick. I assume that's off to VNix. Yep. That's done. And then that's off to VNix. So why is this still showing? Oh, it's showing up because it sells triage on it. Got it. Burn does not repair MSI. Slipstream could be not triage, I think. All right. Great. All right. Let's move on. If you've been in the meeting all this way, thank you. Uh, we're now getting to the important part. We're now gonna talk about uh, Wix v4 status. And the status is that Wix v4 preview one is close, very close. Um, we're down to like 23 bugs, which sounds like a lot, but again, I have half of them. And I have a fix for half of those uh, coming pretty quickly. So uh, we're gonna drop down to uh, single digits uh, quickly is my expectation, which means it's time to start thinking for reals about Wix 4 Preview 1 being done. And since I finished patching and got some headspace back, I've been thinking about it. And Sean, Bob, and I talked about it a little bit. And uh, we're pretty much on target for saying, that, yeah, we're going to use Halloween. We're targeting Halloween for Wix 4 Preview 1. 
Uh, we're sticking to our usual fun pattern of releasing on ho on holidays, all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to try to have Wix 4 Preview 1 on NuGet by Halloween, on Halloween. So you will be able to do all those things that I did like in Deployment Dojo and download it without all the funky uh, uh, personal access token stuff. You'll just be able to say, NuGet tool install Wix.exe and you'll get the MS build behavior, all those things, all of it there will be there Halloween. So what does that mean for the release plan for V4? Now, Halloween is our line of sand. I'm pretty confident we can get there. Um, I have to do a lot of the work to get there. Uh, we have a bunch of things to do on the website and stuff like that, but my, my confidence is high that we will get there, which means that if we release preview one on Halloween, last day of October is really what that says, uh, that we then switch into a mode where we start fixing reported bugs. So November, December, whatever, as people hopefully start picking up Wix 4 Preview 1, uh, the bugs come in and we look for help and we try to get them fixed. If necessary, aka if we get a lot of bugs or we get a bug or something that we're like, you know, we really need to get people to try this and make sure that it will behave correctly, some particular bug fix that's scary, we may release a Preview 2. Uh, essentially is a way of saying, hey, we fixed an important bug in preview one and we need to retest this again to make sure that that fix for that bug uh, didn't destabilize things in a worse way. That would be preview two. And then we'll fix more bugs. If no bugs are reported, then we're done with fixing reported bugs. As bugs are reported, we try to stay on top of those. We look for help. We get tests. We try to fix all those. When there are no bugs to be fixed that uh, we care about, then we release Wix 4. So as I call out here, the timing to release Wix 4 is 100% based on what the bugs look like that get reported in V4. I, I wish I could say that I'm confident that there will be no bugs and that everything's just going to work. It's, it's not, it, I, that's not what's gonna happen. There will be things found. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to have time. I'm gonna go write more unit tests to try to expose more places, uh, especially I wanna go write a few more patching things uh, to see if I can try to flush out stuff in patching. But it does mean that if you're using Wix, Preview 1 is very important for you to pick up and start trying to use it. It doesn't mean you can go production. I know a lot of people will be upset about that. Well, if I can't use it in production, I'm not gonna waste my time on it. You still need to, because we need to know, uh, we need help flushing out all the space and all the bugs. When we find that there are no more bugs that we're interested in fixing for V4, AKA we're punting them to the next release because they're not bad enough, similar to that conversation we had today about the Wix UI one. Yeah, it's not great behavior, but it's not terrible and we'll take the fix in the next release. We will have those conversations about all of these things, all these bugs being triaged. When we get to the point where all the bugs are falling into that bucket of, yeah, we'll just do it in the next release, uh, we're done and Wix 4 is out. So if there's no bugs and everybody's like, yeah, this thing worked perfectly first time, preview one, we'll just do another build and put it up as RTM and declare victory. I'm not talking about Wix 5 yet. This is what we're gonna do because I'm pretty confident we're gonna get some bugs. So if I didn't make it clear, uh, when preview one comes out, we think at the end of this month, we need people to jump on it. And I'm looking at ways to go make that message very, very clear. But this is the first time you're hearing it. We're targeting October. You should be thinking uh, how, I know the holidays are coming up. You should be thinking, how do I in November get my code base running on Wix 4 Preview 1 to validate that it works? That's what you should be thinking about. Because if you don't get your bug reported and we ship Wix 4 without it, uh, then you can wait till Wix 5 for your bug fix to get released. It's gonna be something like that, right? So that's what you need to be thinking as a user of Wix right now. If I'm using three, I need to get onto four preview one at the very beginning of November and any issues I find, I need to make sure I get them imported and maybe even come help us fix them if you can. Uh, and we will be racing towards the end of V4. It is pretty simple in that way. 
that's your responsibility out there as a user. You get to come and help us validate the enormous, well, not quite half a million line code base um, of the Wix tool set. Questions, comments, things people want to talk about. Wix 4 is coming very, very quickly. It's finally happened. The big rocks are gone. These little ones are going to be taken care of. Halloween will be a day. November, you can think of it this way. If you're a Wix user, you're going to be busy in November. We're probably going to end up busy in November because people probably find bugs. But uh, that's what we need to be doing. So I looked it up, and the uh, Vista is actually out, but it's server 2008. Oh, that server will end. 2008. It would be server that would get us winning. Um, and then it's the server OSs that are going to, like, uh, server 2012. Mm. They're showing, like, extended support to 2026. Whew. All right. So that's Windows 7-ish things. Okay. But like 2012 is Windows 8, so. Oh, that was Windows 8 even. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Filling a little more space here as people think about the questions they want to ask. Um, and stuff like that. Uh, we'll probably be back in two weeks. I expect us to be back in two weeks. That's perfect because in two weeks is the 27th, which is four days before Halloween, which is four days hopefully before the release of Wix 4. And during that triage, we should not be talking about, we should be talking about the process we have, the steps we have left to release preview uh, one, like website, binaries being built and uploaded, those kinds of things, that kind of stuff, and triaging things into vNext or beyond, nothing into preview one, essentially. And our preview one bug list should be empty by the 27th. So that date works out really, really well for us as a schedule. It's kind of our last checkpoint in before... Uh, the release of preview one. And if we're not making it, then that'll be the date where we're like, all right, we're not gonna quite make this because this particular bug or something took us longer to get done. So we're going to slip it to November 4th or something like that. But we're not, I don't wanna go very far. It's time before it's being done. So the 27th, right here, the same channel, the same time, we will be talking about hopefully uh, the release of Wix 4 Preview 1 on Halloween so that all of you can wake up from your sugar-induced coma and go from there. Ron, what's the status of your pull request? That's a great question. I sent you mail. I will be pulling. I am I am in the deep in my MS build stuff, which makes it hard for me to switch out to the PRs a lot of times. I will get to your PRs and then jump back in. And actually, that's another point. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, I'm confident that we will get your pull requests in in this amount of time. Not a problem. Um, Jacob and Blair have issues. Why don't I jump over there real quick? Uh, here's the list of all issues open in V4 right now. You'll notice most of them have my smiling face on them. But uh, Jacob has this thing here, allow access persistent variables. and Blair has this BA request gets dropped when UI engine uh, shown on UI engine thread. We need to get these done and in and going. And we'll follow up with these guys. These are the, the Microsoft guys that are helping. Um, and this blank one is a documentation, which we can do in time because that'll all be web stuff now. We no longer need all the great huge amounts of build stuff to make those work. So everything else is assigned to me, but like I said, I'm going to be taking out a lot of these issues. We're going to drop rapidly. So if you have an issue that you want in, you need to get it in like now, <laughs> like uh, this week, next week, not the 24th, not the week of 24th. Do not be trying to get a PR in there because we're, I mean, I know I'll be busy trying to mostly do hopefully web goo and release goo at that point, not thinking about code bug fixes it'll be making sure that all the stuff is ready for the website so if you have an issue it's time to get your pr pushed all the way through ron thank you for staying on top of yours you've done a fantastic job of that and we are going to get your uh fixes in yours uh this 5731 and also currently assigned to me uh is 6847 if you could leave a comment on 6847 uh, ron i will give 
assign this to you so that you will get the full credit for fixing it. I don't know if anybody, how deeply people care about that, but if you do, then you can have the assignment and all that good stuff. So I am talking excitedly because I am excited and I'm trying to be very, very clear. We're, we're getting done. And I know that 23 looks like a lot, but I open most of the issues against myself, which means I know how to get through them. It's not like patching where it took me. What was it in the end, Bob? Six weeks? I, I lost track. Four weeks? Five weeks? Six weeks? Multiple weeks. I, I, I prefer my original estimate that it was three weeks. It wasn't three weeks. <laughs> but it was less than the three months you said. So. It was less than three months. So in that way, it went very well. So, uh, yeah, we're getting done. And, and uh, another thing, for, you, for those of you that are here that watch this later, uh, you're going to start seeing messaging coming from us soon, like very soon from Wix and uh, me and, and, and FireGiant will be pushing it too as well, um, about Wix 4 Preview 1 coming out and the release plan after that and trying to make it crystal clear that people need to use Preview 1 to help us validate it because if they don't get their bugs fixed in Preview 1, they get to wait until the next major release probably like we're like it's just that's probably the way it's going to work so you need to get in now validate now or forever hold your peace or whatever that line is so uh, we're going to be pushing that message if you can help push that message to other people we'd appreciate it let them know that they need to get on wix for preview one and validate it that's going to be the big push um, as soon as I get a few more of these bugs out of my brain and get Ron's PRs resolved, that's going to be one of the big things is getting that message out there. So if that's the plan, should we call it RC1? Uh, um, People aren't really going to want to use a preview. Yeah, I guess. I, .NET, dot .NET uses just previews. No. Oh, they, they have RCs? RCs? Yeah. .NET 7 RC1 one or rc2 just came out yeah really? but rcs for .NET are oh. production supported well yeah so that's the challenge we're not quite production supported but yeah on the other hand what is production supported mean for an open source project it means that yeah i mean it means that we don't the, think the, we're going to break anything more after this uh you know rc1 right, I, the I, point I, is that we're we would still fix bugs that people find yeah um that's which, that's the difference that's what production supported means for an open source project um i don't know how i got in my head that Dot .NET had just switched to previews and no longer did RCs at all. Um, well, they were doing, you know, they did preview seven, I think, and then yeah. it was RC time. So, oh, uh, I, I, if you mm. if you're going to have a lot of previews, numbering them like that might make sense. And plus, they were doing, I think, every month, every couple of weeks, they would do a new preview. Every month. Okay. Yeah. Timing it for Patch Tuesday. <laughs> Of course. Well, you're already updating and you might have to reboot. Perfect time to ship an update. Um, I'm going to think about that. We may call it RC. And It won't really matter because we haven't put the label on there yet anyway. So, but yeah, I will definitely think about that in the next couple of days. It's a good point. Um, I have to go look at the .NET RC line, see if we can adopt that. Yeah. But yeah, that's it's essentially where we're at, which is a good place to be. It's what people have been asking us to do for a very long time. So yeah. we'll be back in two weeks. We're finishing, hopefully in two weeks, the only bugs we have left. We will have a few bugs. By the way, if you're looking at like the bug count, there's going to be a few bugs that will get moved to like an RTM group or whatever. I haven't quite decided how to label that one yet. Uh, but there will be some things that get moved to an RTM group because 
there are things that we have to do after the release, usually tied to the release being done and then the website being updated. And so we're tracking those. So we won't get to zero for preview one because some of them will actually be, some of the V4 issues will be in RTM stuff. But if you have an issue open, you probably don't have one of those because they're almost all maintainer maintenance type things. So uh, get your PRs in, get your bugs uh, reported, and we will go from there. So two weeks from now, should be hopefully a very exciting time. Should be like, yeah, we're getting this thing out. Woohoo! Like the pre-party. That's what I'm hoping. With you know, still a lot of work left to do to actually push the bits up into uh, nougat.org. But that's where we should be going. Two weeks from now, that would be October 27th. Think Halloween. Think November. Wix 4 is on its way. Until then, all you guys have a good one. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.